If you're coming to this video and you're not exactly sure why we always talk about weather compensation and why that's so important, then just think of it as the accelerator in your car. You wouldn't start your car up and put your foot all the way to the floor and then just use the clutch to control um, the speed of the car. You would gently use the accelerator and you would modulate that accelerator. You'd go anywhere from zero to 100% depending on the hills and the type of road. And weather compensation is doing all of this automatically for you, okay? So it's the only way to run a heat pump. Okay, let's talk about the weather compensation curve. I'm showing you on the valent controller, but the principles here will be exactly the same for any other heat pump. If you have, if your heat curve setting is too high, then you'll be trying to put too much heat into the building and you'll be wasting energy. And most of the time it won't be as comfortable because there'll be uh, more highs and lows. And so if you get the right sweet spot, of a heat curve then the home will be more comfortable and you'll be using less energy so if your heat curve is too low then typically your house will be cold so this is what i want you to do on a valent anyway to set the heat curve correctly you want to first you hopefully you've been in control zone one you go into heating and then you're on a weekly planner and as you'll see mine is a bit crazy it's a bit experimental but you'll be heating it during times that you want the building to be heated and then all other times it will go to a setback temperature like when you're asleep or at work for example out of control we're going to go into settings we're going to go to the installer level we're going to go enter the the uh, password and we're going to go to installation configuration okay i want you to pay attention to a few settings okay first of all make sure your adaptive heat curve is deactivated we are going to go back and we are going to go to circuit one in my case this is a central heating circuit and you can see currently the flow temperature is 37 degrees because we're on weather compensation. You can see where the heat curve is, okay? So first of all, I want you to go to room, room temp mod and I want you to change that to inactive if it's not already inactive. This will give us full weather compensation control and no messing around from the controller or any other sensors. And then we're going to go to the heat curve and what I want you to do is I want you to start at 0 0.7. Now I know you may have a completely different home to mine. Um, this is just based on the experience of hundreds, possibly thousands of Valent Aritherm Plus owners in the UK that this is the best start point, okay? If you are handed over a control and it's been left on 1.2, that is the default for a gas boiler you are not going to be running efficiently at all and the home probably won't be that comfortable. So we want to get it right down and we want to get in the right ballpark and I want you to start at 0 0.7 and then what I want you to do is for the next 24 hours you need to see if when we go back to this screen does your desired temperature match the current room temperature okay that's what we're aiming to do with the weather compensation curve you want to get the desired temperature to be the same as the room temperature i've got to stop doing that so at the moment you can see mine is not quite right i'm in a room with a lot of solar gain but we want to get hopefully we want to get it bang on but sometimes within half a degree we'll be fine if you find that your desired temperature is lower than your actual room temperature, then you've got space to put your weather compensation curve back down, okay? So we'll go back in here, we're gonna go back to circle one, circuit one, and then we're gonna turn our heat curve down. And what I want you to do to speed up this process is not go down at 0 0.05 at a time, go down at 0 0.1 at a time. So jump down from 0 0.7 to 0 0.6, okay? and Really, we want to be given 24 hours between each of these changes. Give it a 24-hour period, and then if it's still too warm, then we want to go down to 0 0.5. And if it's still too warm, then we want to go down to 0 0.4. And most people won't ever go lower than 0 0.4. But if we jump from 0 0.6 to 0 0.5 and then we find ah oh, the ro the desired temperature is now 19 degrees but the room temperature has dropped to 18.5, we want to just notch that up a little bit. We want to go back up to 0 0.55 and then we want to give it another 24 hours and hopefully we found our sweet spot. For me, I found that 0 0.65 is about perfect for our home. During this early morning period, 
said, I'm aiming for 19 degrees. And I may not get, at midnight, it might not be exactly 19 degrees because it's going to take a while to warm up. But really, what we want in the middle of this period at, say, 6 or 6 a.m., for example, we need that to be at 19 degrees. And the same could be said for the next period of 21 degrees. We want that between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. So let's say at 1 p.m., 2 p.m., we need to make sure that it's 21 degrees. So that we're really looking in the middle of these periods so that we've got plenty of time for the heat pump to get the correct flow temperatures. Anyway, I've waffled on for far too long. I hope this is helpful. Setting your weather compensation curve may be the most important thing you can do. And then all the other controls will fall into place from there. Thanks for watching. On to the next video. Goodbye.